A surprise birthday party takes a harrowing turn, leaving 20 people dead and dozens of families devastated. We just got out of the car as fast as we could because we thought there was a, a tree falling down, an explosion. We didn't know what it was. It soon spirals into America's deadliest transportation disaster in recent history. Was it sheer negligence or an inescapable tragedy? On October 6, 2018, Amy Steenberg's friends and family planned to celebrate her 30th birthday at a brewery about an hour away. After the initial limo rental was canceled at the last minute, they hastily hired one from Prestige Limousine of Wilton. The white stretch limousine they ordered was a customized 2001 Ford Excursion XLT. The massive SUV weighing 10,000 pounds underwent a dramatic transformation. It was split in half and seamlessly welded together, extending its length by an additional 12 feet, effectively morphing it into a bus-like structure. At approximately 1.30 p.m., the limousine pulled up and the group of 17 eagerly boarded the vehicle. Among them were four sisters, two brothers, three army veterans, and two newlywed couples. Inside the excursion, the celebrants were greeted by flashy neon lights, worn-out padded benches, and floorboards marred by rust. One of the partygoers reached out to a friend, who had initially planned to join, but decided against it, saying, The limo sounds like it's going to explode. Yes, haha, <laughs> it's a junker, literally. The motor is making everyone deaf. The limousine headed out of Amsterdam and onto Route 30 a winding two-lane road that cuts through the countryside toward the brewery in Cooperstown, about an hour's drive from Montgomery County, New York. The group was enjoying themselves, taking photos and chatting as they rode along. However, not long into the trip, something went horribly wrong. As the car drove down a steep hill towards a T-junction in Skohari, the driver urgently hit the brakes, but to his horror, the brake system failed. The limousine speed rapidly increased, quickly surpassing 100 miles per hour. Desperate to avoid a collision where the car stopped at the intersection, the driver made a split-second decision to veer over the double pavement striping, bypassing the stop sign and careening into the driveway of a nearby restaurant. On the opposite side of the road, nestled in the parking lot of a country store, the excursion collided with a parked Toyota Highlander hurtling the SUV 80 feet through the air. Two unsuspecting pedestrians, a father and son-in-law, were tragically caught in the path of destruction when the Highlander fatally struck them. Sadly, the calamity did not end there. Despite ramming into the Highlander, the excursion continued at a speed of around 80 miles per hour towards its final resting place. The violent impact of trees sent fragments of debris flying through the air. The sound of shattering glass and twisting metal reverberated through the air. The limousine ultimately came to rest in a ditch, with the engine bay nearly flattened. Surprisingly, the exterior of the passenger compartment appeared eerily intact, masking the gruesome reality within. The collision instantly claimed the lives of 16 individuals as the force of the impact caused fatal injuries. The absence of seatbelts exacerbated the situation, leading to further harm as the passengers' bodies collided within the cabin. Emergency responders were quickly dispatched to the scene, but the situation was dire. They grabbed the jaws, I fired the jaws up, they went down there, within two minutes they had that car open, we were pulling bodies out. They were still alive. And we kept going. In the aftermath, the death toll rose to 20, with two additional lives lost within hours. This included all 18 individuals in the limousine. It was one of the deadliest transportation accidents in recent history, leaving behind shattered families and grieving friends. The extent of the tragedy had such a profound impact on experienced paramedics that they suffered severe mental health issues due to the distressing scene they encountered at the crash site. After the crash, an intensive investigation began to uncover the causes and potential factors at play. 
it wasn't long before a series of troubling information came to light. The limousine was in poor condition, with numerous mechanical issues that had not been addressed. Federal authorities had found that the company that stretched the limo in 2001 didn't have the required license and failed to upgrade the brakes to handle the extra weight. And even though the State Department of Transportation classified the excursion as a bus because of its size, it hadn't gone through the necessary certification or inspection process. More troublingly, the department had issued two separate orders for the limo to be taken off the road in the months leading up to the accident. Despite this, the sticker indicating the vehicle's unfitness was missing at the time of the crash. Additionally, the company had already been ordered to surrender the registration and license plates for all his vehicles, including the limo, because of previous violations. Federal records show the company had received 22 citations for violations within 24 months before the crash. In September, three of their vehicles failed inspections and were cited for infractions, such as defective emergency exits and malfunctioning brakes. The driver was not properly licensed to operate the vehicle. He was also not subjected to mandatory drug testing as an autopsy would later reveal the presence of THC in his system. Numerous lap seat belts in the limousine went unnoticed by the passengers because they were hidden beneath the benches. They were only found when investigators removed the seats post-crash. While some visible lap and shoulder belts were present, it remains unclear why none of the passengers had buckled up. As investigations progressed, unsettling questions emerged regarding the limo company's clandestine ties to law enforcement. Shahed Hussein, the company's owner, had a controversial past, having been an informant for the FBI in a terrorism investigation. However, he had returned to his native Pakistan six months before the crash. But Shahed's connections couldn't shield him from impending legal actions. In March 2019, a grand jury indicted him and his son, Nauman, on charges of manslaughter and criminally negligent homicide. The charges alleged that the younger Hussein had allowed the limousine to remain in service despite knowing it was unsafe. In fact, state officials had declared it unfit for use a month prior. Though prosecutors alleged that Nauman removed the out-of-service sticker from the windshield and that his actions had directly contributed to the deaths of the passengers. After initially entering a plea of not guilty, Hussein struck a deal with prosecutors in February 2021. In exchange for pleading guilty to 20 counts of criminally negligent homicide, one count of manslaughter, and one count of assault, Hussein was sentenced to probation and community service, but avoided prison time. But his time in court wasn't over. The outcome sparked fury among the victims' families, who felt justice was left unserved. In August 2022, a judge dismissed the deal as fundamentally flawed, saying it failed to acknowledge Hussein's awareness of the risks. As a result, Nauman Hussein withdrew his plea. More than five years after the tragic accident, justice would finally be done. Today, he was sentenced to 5 to 15 years after hearing heart-wrenching statements from nine different family members. A juror said it was the limo operator's repeated efforts to skirt DOT rules and regulations, his lack of maintenance on the limo that led to this guilty verdict. While the sentence handed down is less than the families had hoped for, their advocacy for safety and reform in the transport sector has prompted tangible change in the industry with the limo safe legislation. The new mandate calls for stricter vehicle inspections, amplified oversight of limo operating companies, and the incorporation of additional safety equipment in the vehicles. Although this will do little to lessen the devastated family's heartache and grief, it offers some comfort that their loved one's deaths enacted change in an industry lacking adequate safety oversight. Watch this episode next if you found this video interesting. Please add a like and leave a comment if you want to support the channel.